Hello everyone, my name is Avkash and you are all welcome to this three-part series titled All Things Wiki Game. With this series, my objective is to give you everything you need to know with regard to VQ GAN. In all three series, we are going to cover topics such as autoencoder, variational autoencoder, latent space, and the reconstruction error related to autoencoders, factor quantized variational autoencoder with the focus on codebook, its generation, the latent vectors in the codebook and how the codebook stores the features from the source or the input data. Finally, we are going to cover the vector quantized variational autoencoder and generative adversarial neural networks or the GAN. At last, we are going to look at the transformers and how the transformers takes the advantage of code to extract the features so that new images can be generated through the VQ GAN. So as you can see that this three part video series all things VQ GAN is packed with the explanation and the details regarding with very important components related to VQ GAN. So let's get in this three part series. The first part is focused on auto encoders with extra emphasis on latent space and the reconstruction error. The second part of this series is going to focus on variational auto encoder and the vector quantized variational autoencoder or VQVAE with the special emphasis on code book. In this part, we are going to learn how the code book is created in the vector quantized variational autoencoder and how it is used subsequently later to extract features from the source data and then using these features to generate new images. The third and the last part of this series is going to focus on VQVAE and the GAN together with the special emphasis on the transformer and its connection to the code book. In this third part, we will learn how the VQVAE plays the role of generator in the GAN where the discriminator is used to make sure the images are generated through the VQ GAN are correct and as expected. All three parts are very well connected to each other. So it's best to cover these three parts one after another. So let's get started with the autoencoder and special emphasis on latent space and reconstruction error in this very first part of part VQ GAN tutorial. And Autoencoder is a technique to encode something automatically. It means for the autoencoder, there is input data that has to be encoded and it can be decoded by using the sum process within the autoencoder. The basic principle behind autoencoder is that the autoencoder should be able to encode the given input and by using the encoded value it should be able to generate the same input. The first component is the encoder. It learns how to compress the original input into a small encoding and the second component is the decoder. It learns how to restore the original data 
from that encoding generated by the encoder. So the autoencoder has to be master in giving these two tasks. First, the autoencoder must be efficient to learn a compression method for given data using the given or any compression methods. Second, the autoencoder should also be able to generate the new data based on compressed or the encoded data as closely as possible to the original data. So if our objective is to encode an image through the autoencoder and retrieve the image back, first the image as input will be encoded by the encoder and the encoded data or the embedding or the latent space for the encoded image will be created. Next, the decoder is going to use the encoded data or the latent space to generate the image as output. So with the autoencoder, these two properties are very important. The first one is the encoding size which is applicable for the each input. And the second one is the compression technique, which is going to be applicable to the overall encoder. By looking at this image, we can see that an autoencoder is used to encode the original image into a 16 by 2 vector code and then finally reconstructed the image based on given 16 by 2 or the 32 vector code and also using the lossy compression technique. As you could see, because the latent space or the encoding space is 16 by 2 or the 32 latent vector for the given image, the reconstructed image is not as closely to the original. However, if we change the latent space to 50 by 10, it means the encoding has about 500 latent vectors for the source image. It helps the autoencoder to reconstruct the image back to as closely as possible to the original image. It means the size of vector code or the latent space for the given image is very important to select depending on how close or how perfect your target result requirements are. So in the first image, we have significant loss in the image. However, while increasing the latent space for the encoded data, help us to allocate more space for the fact representation for the given image, which helps us to retrieve the image back as close to the original image. So now, if we use the autoencoder to learn a collection of dogs images and by using the source dog images, our target is to generate the dog images based on learned dog images as source, next few slides will help us to understand how this process is going to be worked through autoencoder. Here we have an autoencoder, which is a composition of encoder and the decoder. The latent space size here is two by one, it means the encoded data from all the images will be stored as two by one size. At the start, we have these five dog images. At step one, every dog image is going to be encoded into a two by one space. Similar to first, the second dog image is going to be encoded and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Here, our encoded image size is two by one. 
depending on auto encoder configuration this size could be anything now the encoded image are going to be converted into the latent space or the latent vector in the second step and all of these values from every source input data will generate the latent vector of the given size here the size is two by one it means two values in a one dimensional space so now we have our encoded latent vector for all the given source data the latent space has five latent vectors size two by one for each individual dog image input in the next step the decoder is going to read the latent space for the latent vectors and going to decode the corresponding values for the source data and finally these values are going to be used to generate the final dog images as closely as possible depending on how much loss was there while encoding the source data into the latent space. So you have seen that latent space is very important to understand in this overall process. So you might be wondering what is the latent space. So a latent space is also known as the latent feature space or the embedding space. It's an embedding of a set of items within the manifold in which items which re resemble each other more closely are positioned closer to one another in the latent space. So let's spend few more minutes to learn more about latent space. So in the next few slides, we are going to learn the latent space in much more clarity. So far, you have understood that the understanding of latent space is very important to understand autoencoders. So let's spend more time to understand latent space better in the next few slides. To better understand the concept of latent space, let's think about how human perceive the world. We are able to understand a broad range of topics such as dogs by encoding each observed event in a compressed presentation in our brain. So we can say that a latent space is defined as an abstract multi-dimensional space that encodes a meaningful internal representation of externally observed event. Samples that are similar in the external world are positioned close to each other in the latent space. Our brain keeps an internal representation of the general appearance of a dog and that works for every information we store in our brain and recognize later. In a similar way, the latent space tries to provide a compressed understanding of the world to a computer through a spatial representation. Now, looking into the world of artificial intelligence and the deep learning, so we have input data and in general, the input data varies. It can be the text embeddings or a collection of text such as features. It can also be the image data, which is unstructured data, and each image is a vast collection of information itself. And it can also be the very structured data, such as the transactional values. All of these values are processed through a deep learning model, which generate features, and these features are stored as vectors. These encoded features are encoded from a higher dimensional input space to a low dimensional latent space using this deep learning model 
or the neural network. Now, these encoded features at the latent space can be used to process further solve classification problems. They can also solve regression problem or can be used for reconstructions such as rebuilding the image or it can also be used to detect the outliers. It means the new values are not similar to the given trained values or the given input values. Hope this little information should clarify the latent space for you, which is very much important for us to understand autoencoder as well as the VQGAN. Now, now we are back to autoencoders where we left off. So the size of latent space, it varies based on the problem. However, if you have images to encode through an autoencoder, the latent space can be 32 by 1, means 32 vectors per image, or it can be up to 256 values per given image. The size of latent space is defined by the autoencoder creator or the AI engineer, and both the encoder and the decoder can achieve their objective because both encoder and the decoder are the convolutional neural networks. So if our objective is to use autoencoder to encode an image and then reconstruct the same input image, as a result, the autoencoder will process the data as explained next. First, we will set the size of latent space. Here, let's assume the size is 256 by 1. Now, we have the input image size 512 by 512 as input data. At the next step, the encoder will be used to encode the 512 by 512 image into a 256 by 1 size of latent vectors. In the next step, the decoder will be used to reconstruct the image by using the latent vectors for the given input data. And that's how the 512 by 512 size of output data will be reconstructed using the 256 by 1 size of latent space. Here, the autoencoder will use the parameter or the matrix as reconstruction loss. So as we are going to reconstruct the image based on original image and coded data from the latent space, we train our model based on reconstruction loss. So what is reconstruction loss? So the reconstruction loss is the loss function which is used to train an autoencoder as it is a check of how well the image has been reconstructed from the source or the input. Lower the reconstruction loss while in training and generating the image, it means the reconstruction of this target data is very close to the original source data. All the content related to this tutorial is located in this All Things VQGAN folder at the DeepWorks repo at my ProdRamp GitHub account. So in this first part of VQGAN series, we have covered autoencoders and a special emphasis on latent space and the reconstruction error. Now we are ready to learn the variational autoencoder and vector quantized variational autoencoder with a special emphasis to codebook. I hope you have enjoyed this first series and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the second series of this all things VQGAN tutorial. So that's all I had for you in this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed the content in my video. If you have liked it, 
please do share it please subscribe my channel and also comment your feedback or any suggestions you have i do appreciate your time and i'm looking forward to see you in my next video until then please be good and do good thank you